All right, so that's the end of the New Japan portion of it. If you guys don't want to hear anything else, I'll let some people sneak it in because I get a lot of crap, Brian. Where's the, why don't you do a video game one with Brian? Because I'm like, Brian don't want to answer all these questions all the time about video games and everything else. And you're going to ask questions he can't answer. So, um, and Sick in the chat. I don't chat, mind them. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Sick put in the chat before. It's okay, Brian. I don't blame you. Just give us a better competitive online wrestling game that we can play. So, <laughs> He was talking that, and then Sick probably saw himself out because he put my prediction, Enzo and Cash joined the Bullet Club, and then he said, I'll see myself out. you damn right you will. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to see that. Uh, somebody said, where's 2K's location? I got a problem with them. Uh, you can find them at WWE Games on Twitter. You can send them messages there. Um, <laughs> Derek, inappropriate language. This is why I do not have the chat displayed anymore so people can see what you guys are saying in here. Um yeah, but if people got questions, all good. Um, yeah, I gotta say, you know, uh, I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't been on Twitter. I don't think I've really said much about Two K Twenty, just because I kind of feel it's like, look, I mean, I know people who worked on that project. My ex girlfriend uh, was still there, although you know she wasn't involved on anything creative. She's a producer, but uh, all I can say is that you know I. I, I kind of saw this coming. I mean, I, I, I ever since I mean I was at THQ, uh, they have been trying to take the game away from Ukes, not for any malicious reasons or anything. It's just business, you know. If you're a publisher and you own development studios, it just makes sense that you would want to have if you have the you know the IP or you're licensing you know someone's IP. It just makes sense that why would, instead of having a third party developer like my company you know, making a game, it's just always easier to just bring stuff in house. So we tried it at THQ with Rainbow. Um, and that's when I was, that was like when I was developing 2008 and saw early builds of that. And, you know, obviously it didn't go anywhere because everybody kind of, every, a lot of people kind of, uh, they, they take, they, they underestimate what it takes to develop a wrestling game because there's not a lot of things to really choose from. You know, it's not like a first person shooter where you can, you know, you got the Halo, you call it duties, your, uh, you know, all these, you know, games that are very similar to one another. So, and that's all, that's always been my experience. You know, even when I first got hired at THQ before the whole two that, you know, rainbow thing, I remember Corey Ledesma was telling me, you know, stories how before he got his position, you know, THQ were trying to, you know, bring that thing in house. And at one point even told you, cause this was during the development of Smack and Here Comes the Pain, that we don't need you guys, you know, I mean, they didn't, they said it nicer than that, but just that, you know, we're going to do this ourselves. So thank you. But as, as Corey told me, um, Ukes, they just kept developing because they had, they, they had a feeling that they were going to come back to them <laughs> because they weren't going to be able to get anything started. And sure enough, that's what happened. And so they came back to you and said, okay, yeah, let's just continue this arrangement. And so, you know, they did Here Comes the Pain and, you know, everything else up to that point. But, I mean, yeah, when I went to 2K after, you know, THQ's collapsed, I mean, I always had in the back of my head that at some point, especially at 2K, because they own so many development studios. You know what I mean? It's like, why would they pay another third-party developer? So wasn't surprised how this whole thing happened. But I, I, I was surprised with... Uh, what happened with uh, this year's release you, you know the main uh, thing i miss from it in all honesty and if you guys didn't know i used to run like the largest e-fed it's it was xgw they have a twitter uh me multiple people who are in the chat right now actually can go on there run it talk about it i miss the personal interactions with you guys from uh when 2k kind of took it over i know they did like dev spotlights and uh you know lionel you i know in 15 you appeared in like a video those were cool but it didn't feel personal anymore like i used to love when they would put the camera on you there was nothing better than to see brian on camera getting asked questions about stuff you know he can't answer like brian who is the dlc for the game can you tell me if wade barrett's gonna be in because the nexus just debuted and brian says no comment but it's written on his his face and he, he starts laughing and i'm like oh yeah that'd be something good and brian could have said no and people be like oh you know what that meant he didn't say no for sure he said just no because it's gonna be in dlc i'm telling you and people would just come up with these crazy things but i just miss even Corey, um marcus stevenson thq tank 
Aubrey even. I love when you and Aubrey played 2K14. Like, dude, watching you guys play that was so much fun. And we just got to see what the game was about. And I was like, these dudes are wrestling fans. I don't feel that with 2K. I don't feel like you're a wrestling fan. I feel like you watched in the Attitude Era and now you got a job making a game. Cool. Yeah, you know, you, you bring up all those people. And it's funny because, like, <laughs> I, like, when I got, when I got, you know, started doing design work uh, for the game, you know, when I got promoted at THQ, I, it never dawned on me that I would have to be out there, like, doing interviews and, like, being, like, in front of cameras and stuff. And I remember the first time it happened, it was, we were promoting, I guess it was 2007. And I was I was told, Corey told me, he's like, yeah, we need to go to this, uh, this game, game spot or some kind of, yeah, some kind of show. And it was like, yeah, it just needs you to talk to some people about the game. And I'm like, uh, okay. And my, when he said talk to people, I just thought he meant like, yeah, there'd be some press, you know, like, you know, answer a couple of questions. And I get there and Jamie Jensen, who was our, uh, she was in charge of our PR. She was like, okay, so these guys are going to interview you. And I'm seeing this big camera and I'm like, um, like, you're going to record this? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, yeah. You, 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 don't worry, you can do this. And I was so fucking scared, man. I didn't know what I was going to say. Like, I kind of froze up. So I was really hesitant and scared when I started doing those. But as I got more reps under my, under my belt, I looked forward to doing them. You know, I got to meet so many people and interact with so many cats that I still interact with to this day, uh, like on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. And I, I enjoyed, I mean, I don't know a lot of shit, but I know wrestling and I know the games that I was working on. And I love nothing more than to talk about it because it's not like I could talk about that shit with my my friends or my girlfriend. They really didn't <laughs> give a shit about, about what exactly. I was doing at work. Yeah, dude, but being I, able to, you used to answer my questions and come into forums and stuff, and I would just see you in there, or Marcus or someone. I'm like, this is so dope that they actually talk to you, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll t- put that in consideration. We could probably try and do something with that. And I would come with reasonable things. I'm not saying, like, Inferno match, where's Punjabi prison? I'm like, dude, listen, chill with all that. I just need this move in the game. Can we do this? Is that possible? Is there a reason why? I used to look for that stuff. Um, I love it. Let me. Can I get to some of the people in the chat's questions, or did you have more you wanted to tell them? No, 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 yeah, let's get some, let's, let's some, get some questions. Let's, let's get on. some rapid fire real quick, and then we'll get Brian on out of here, because this is a little bit bonus for you guys, a little bonus. Um, King W wants to know, would you consider making a mode where you can work a match and set up spots instead of just playing competitively? Uh, Sure. <laughs> That's something I've actually uh, thought about. We actually were going to implement something similar to that uh, when I was at THQ. Um, but yeah, no, that's a good idea. You know, uh, you know, I guess, uh, creative, creative minds think alike, but, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that I think has, has legs depending on how you implement it. But, yeah, yeah. That, that feels like how good the fire idea. pro series is though. That's more of a real wrestling game, like set up the move so you can get to a hundred percent match, but then you kind of want to win too at the same time versus the WWE games always felt like fighting games and you wanted to win no matter what it all costs. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's a good idea. Donnie wants to know, question for Brian, what is your favorite all-time video game? All-time. All-time. Oh, shit. Damn. This is a tough one. Uh, wow. You know what's funny? As soon as, <laughs> can I just tell you the three games that popped into my head Go when, ahead. When, you, when, you, when you ask me that? Uh, SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, GTA San Andreas, CJ and I know I'm gonna get San Andreas. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a lot of probably potential hatred for this one, but I don't give a shit. Uh, Super Mario Brothers two. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. I know I get teased about my love of Super Mario Brothers two all the time. I know three is good. I like three, but two to me, it was so off putting and just weird. <laughs> that like, you liked wow, it. Is- yeah, and then and then obviously you know as I got older you know and you know doing my research about the game and you know finding out that that was never even meant to be a Super Mario Brothers game they just reskinned some other game that was in development to try to 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 just put a product out there and that just made me love that game even more and because uh, it was yeah it was so weird and bizarre you know based off especially the first Super Mario Brothers you know for the NES. Uh, but then I loved how at the end when you beat that toad, 
<laughs> it all makes sense because you realize that the reason this this felt like you were playing Mario on acid, which is saying something, because like just the regular Mario Brothers is wacky enough. But the whole reason that it was it felt so weird is because you know you see Mario sleeping and he dreamed the whole thing, and I was like, that was fucking brilliant. I I, I love I love that game. I just put hashtag beat that toad in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I love it. Those are those are good games, though. I I have no issues with any of them. They all remind me of my childhood, probably in different stages. Actually, GTA and Here Comes the Pain are definitely like high school years before before you guys had online. I remember the beginning stages of online. I think I beat a couple people. Maybe it was SmackDown versus I can't remember if that had it first or if it was Here Comes the Pain. One of them had it where we had to hook it in. There were wires going across rooms. I'm like, man, we ain't got time for this. Back in the day, you had to put your game in the backpack. Put your memory card, your two controllers, and if you had, if yeah. you were paid and you had the wire tap, you could put four in. You could go over to your boy's house, and then you could get it on. Have the twenty bucks sit in the middle of the table, like, all right, let's play some. Here comes the pain. This is who we're doing. Don't do any spammy stuff. This is the ref. He says you cheated. You spammed. You're done. So we used to go in for that stuff. And GTA, dude, greatest game. And my name's CJ, so that's definitely one of my favorite ones. That character was for me. Um, I remember, I think my sister was playing it one time. She's like, yo, I gotta try this game. I mean, she doesn't play video games, really, and she was playing San Andreas. Like, yo, this is kind of dope. <laughs> so, yeah, San, good San memories. It, it, was, it was, San Andreas to me was like the, it's my favorite GTA game. Like, I haven't been able to really get into any other Grand Thefts after that. I mean, I played, you know, I played uh, 4 and 5, but I don't know. Like, for me, like, everything I wanted out of that type of game open world, whatever, like, I, I felt like I got it and then some playing San Andreas. And the fact that, you know, the, the protagonist, you know, was a brother, like, somebody looked like me, like, that really, I, it, I hadn't really seen that before. And uh, I don't know. And, I mean, it not that's not the only reason, but, I mean, that and the fact that the game was as good as it was, it just it was a hard thing to uh, for me to, to get past playing other Grand Theft Autos. Donnie um, says you have an I, awesome top three, by the way. <laughs> he said you have an awesome oh, top thanks. three, and thank you for answering. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, I was gonna say, I think the first SmackDown game to have online, man. It's, I want. I think it was. A, it was the first SmackDown versus Raw proper. I think. I think it was that. I, I remember beating a couple people, and I was like, "Let me get off of this, man, because this thing is laggy." So I was like, "I'm done yeah. with this." Yeah, it was really. It was really laggy back then. I think that's the one with the, with Vince McMahon on the cover, his face. Yeah, with the two eyes. That's the original. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sick. Me and Sick talk about this stuff all the time. He says, "Why do you feel wrestling games haven't made it to the esports stage yet? What is holding them back?" Um. Quick answer. Mm -hmm. At least, I mean, at least as far as you know, the, the stuff that I I was working on, you know, at TSU and Two K, um, the development cycle, annualized, you know, an annualized title. I know some others, you know, uh, titles do that, but. I mean, as you've seen, I mean, I, I'm not even talking about 2K20, but even, you know, the stuff it's, that I worked on, I mean... It's we all had, annual games, man. It's Madden, it's NBA, every, it's starting to really show now that you can't, you need time on these games. Yeah, yeah, and that's always been, I mean, look, I mean, it's no secret, I mean, I, I'm i very cognizant and realistic of the stuff that uh, that I worked on and that we've put out, and yeah, we've had a history of, you know, putting out some bucky stuff at times, so... I mean, and obviously that's not something you can do if you want to have it for an event. I do think that at some point, maybe with what, you know, uh, we do, and I say we, my company moving forward, because we have had discussions internally about that. I mean, that is something we like to do. But in choosing to do that, we know that, yeah, we, we, know, we need to take our time and make sure that, you know, we basically, you know, dot our I's, cross our T's, and make sure that, you know, we're not just kind of rushing something to market just because the... Uh, the you know the, the the person you know the IP is demanding it you know I mean the stuff with with working with the WWE and like that license I mean they and I mean I'm sure you've heard it from probably Justin I mean he's mentioned it before Justin Leeper my you know who's a really good friend of mine and it's uh it's kind of crazy to see him kind of coming out and you know kind of being more vocal about uh about the franchise with this 2K20 thing but you know it, he is right when I, I think he said I might even said it before too I mean you know like the WWE, like when you're working on that game, at least when I was there, um, there is no taking two years to do it. Like that's part of the contract that's in the contract that like, you have to, this game needs to be out at, 
yearly at a certain time, you know, because it factors into their uh, their quarter. Um, so, you know, that kind of can sometimes get in the way. And But again, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you know that, and it's all about mitigating and, you know, if you have to reduce the feature set in order to give yourself enough time to, uh, to test and iterate and to make sure that it's like, yeah, you know, we might have wanted to do something grander, but it's like, you know, the, the schedule is just not going to make it possible or it will make it possible, but we're not going to have time to really vet everything to make sure that the game is as bug free as it can be. So, you know, not that it can't be done, but you just have to be realistic about what it is you can realistically add or put into the game year over year. Um, let me, so you could just fly through some of these, Brian. Uh, Elijah Washington wanted to know what you think of Britt Baker. Uh, do you think she needs to work on her move set and turn heel? Um, I, I see potential in Britt Baker. I mean, I hear, you know, obviously a lot of people, you know, kind of tease some of her matches. I just think, I just think, I mean, I think a lot of people lose sight of the fact that, I mean, this, she's still relatively new to pro wrestling. I mean, she, this isn't an Oscar or a Kyrie situation, um, a Becky Lynch. I mean, she is still new. And I think, you know, I love AEW, and I know their women's division gets a lot of flack, and I've given it flack. I mean, look, they're at the stage now where it's like you're putting something on TV. As much as I love what they're doing, it's like they are open to criticism. Um, I, but I will, I, I, I think she's going to be okay. I just think, you know, she just needs more reps. Uh, I'm not sure what they're allowing their talents to do when they're not doing TV, but I remember like, when they first started AEW, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I, I heard them mention that they still allowed their talents to work independent dates they do i'm not sure if that's everybody chris statlander's uh wrestling in beyond wrestling i can't remember who the guy is now she's doing an intergender match in beyond wrestling though yeah and she's going to be doing bar wrestling here in la um new year's day as well so i know some talents are still going to go and, and do their any stuff but no i think Britt's going to be fine i know I, i'm rooting for all the women in AEW. i really am uh i like chris statlander i'm not sure if this whole alien thing is really going to get over in like a, um, a mainstream thing or it can, but my, my biggest, my biggest problem with AEW and the women's division, and honestly with a lot of AEW, although they're getting better at it now, I mean, have they given any woman any time to cut a promo on dynamite outside of uh brandy? I mean, I know Ali had a little interview that got interrupted cause she got, cause Kong came out, but they got to do more to establish like who these women are. Right. Whether they're pre tapes or just you know allowing them to cut some promos, I think but, that part time uh, schedule is hurting it too a little. A lot, a lot of them are part time, whether they're going back to stardom or like Rio wasn't yeah. there for weeks. Yeah, right. But the thing is, like, I'm, I'm, is that because of her other commitments? I guess it could be. But I, but at the same same time, the one thing I do like about AEW is that they only have the one show, and they do they don't overexpose their talent the way that you know with WWE. Some, I mean. You get tired of seeing the same guys, you know, week in and week out. But there's a middle ground that they got to find. Because, um, like, Darby Allen, I love Darby Allen. You know, he's not on every show. And when he is, it's like, oh, shit, cool, Darby. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking you forward get just to just enough. Match, totally. Just enough from each yeah. person. Um, but they just need more character development, you know, with everybody, the men and the women. It, it takes time, too. When you're a brand new company, I, I say this every week when I review Dynamite, because some people are like, well, NXT is better. And I'm like, I get it. I usually get a dislike because it's just a Dynamite review. And someone's just going to come and be like, yeah, dislike. Haha. But when you're doing this, you're building all these people up. You have to feature them. Like on Dark, I like that they featured Chris Statlander, or maybe it was Being the Elite, and Orange Cassidy, and they kind of interacted, and they're weird. They're like, we got aliens in our video with the best friends. I'm like, these dudes are so weird. And I'm just like, whatever, man, it works. It works that they're all together. And you know what's funny is that I I watch Dark, too, and like uh, Dark, honestly, probably does a better job of like showing character stuff than they do on Dynamite. And I think... Because they had Chris Statlander cut an actual promo where she was talking you know she wasn't just booping people she was just talking she kind of had a mission statement and i'm like well why isn't that on tnt like you know we got to show the rest of these people you know uh, these promos and it wasn't a bad promo either i think it wouldn't hurt for them to do a little bit less on tnt they're giving us great matches but i don't think you need to every time cut a couple minutes out and put the promo in there give someone a live mic go talk what what is this all right and then you just let them do their thing um, let's, let me get to the but next one, question. But, all right. But one last, before you get to that question, I mean, you mentioned it before about, you know, when people, like, I, I love NXT. I mean, anybody who's followed me or read my stuff on Twitter or 
or you know whatever. Like I, NXT is the only WWE program that I watch. I I stopped watching Raw and SmackDown months ago, and uh, oh, I got so much more free time. It's awesome. <laughs> but uh, I watch. I love NXT. I love AEW. But when I hear these comparisons, and look, you can compare NXT to AEW to to a certain degree, but at the same time, it's like you said. I mean, you're comparing a promotion that's been around since 2014 to one that has been on TV for what two and a half months, three months, eleven weeks. You know, yeah. eleven weeks. Yeah, it's like you gotta. I mean, not. To, I mean, again, I, I'm not trying to give excuses to AEW, but I mean that's. That's a big that's a big divide in terms of experience. You know what I mean? So And there's no someone writers. That watched- Tony Khan is funding this with his own money and well or his father's money. It doesn't matter. They, the money is there for it. They they don't have twelve writers sitting in a room writing this stuff. The wrestlers are all working on this together, like it's, everybody's at different stages. Jericho doesn't need to go out and wrestle indies unless he wants to. Neither does Dustin. Dustin Rhodes doesn't need to. And he's put out a great offer to start up a wrestling school to help train some people. And I saw people trying to say stuff about the punches. In all honesty, Brian, I didn't see the punches missed until it came up on Twitter. I didn't. No, me neither. No, because it wasn't shown on TV. But, but again, no, look, there's, there's no excuse for that. Even if it wasn't shown on TV, uh, that was, they, look, they took, you know, they took it on the chin that week. That was bad. It wasn't good. But you know what? Shit happens in WWE like that. Any promotion you're gonna, you know, if someone's sitting in a, you know, in the crowd, they can, you know, find a a, a, a punch that didn't get anywhere close, or someone's selling something that didn't connect. Sasha and you the Rumble kicks the one time where they panned the camera to her, and she's not really kicking the person, and she's looking back like, "What? Are you coming? <laughs> are you coming out? Yeah. Like, come on." I mean, um, that kind it, of stuff happens. It happens. They'll learn yeah. from it. Though. They'll and learn I, from it. And I'm not trashing on anybody for it. And Dustin even said, "Punch me next time." So now you've heard him say it. Like, don't. Don't miss it on him. You better lay it in because he wants a yeah. good show. Um, Obi-Wan, original Biggie wants to know, do you have any advice for getting in the business? He has ideas and features. He does a lot of videos on the uh, WWE video games franchise and how they can improve things. And he wants to know, is there a way that he could get in? What's, what do you yeah, recommend? It, what, the, the gaming industry? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's... I mean, the only way I know how to get in is the way that I took... Um, I mean, there obviously there's other, there's probably more avenues now than when I first got in. Cause I didn't, I got in through, uh, when I was at TSG, uh, through the, you know, QA, I was a, I was a, I was a tester. Um, and just, you know, I learned from there and I just kind of started to move. I, I moved up to PD, uh, via that route. Um, but I mean, it, I guess the first step is, you know, where, where, find, you know, wherever you live, just do a search for uh, you know any development studios, publishers that are in the, that are in your area or that are close to you, and uh, you know just go to uh, what's uh, Gama Sutra is a really good website uh, where you can locate you know uh, you know studios, publishers you know in your area and just kind of see if there's if you can get a foot in the door. Um, barring that, I mean now you can go to a lot of colleges have uh, programs where you can go to and study you know game development, game design. That wasn't something that was around when I was in college, uh, but I know it is now. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's just uh, you got to do, do, do your research, you know, find out what's around you and just try to, uh, you know, make some phone calls, see if, uh, if anybody's hiring. I mean, and I, and I, I, got, and I came in because, you know, I, I have a degree in art history. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a problem. I'm not a programmer. Um, I don't have any of those technical skills. I've kind of learned them along the way. But a lot can be said for just getting your foot in the door and being a hardworking individual, you know, caring about what it is that you do and not being a dick. Because when you're in the game industry, you're working with a lot of people. And I can tell you the one thing that definitely will not work for you is that if you cannot be a team player and if you cannot get along with your coworkers or if you're someone that no one really wants to be around, uh, you're not. I mean, unless you're a programmer, because you can be as weird as you want because everybody needs programmers. <laughs> uh, but, but barring that, you know, like, uh, that's not going to get you very far. Uh, I attribute, I guess, what, my success since I've been doing this for like 16 years, mostly to the fact that I get along with people. And most people like have me around. And I'm a team player. I, you know, I love what I do. And, you know, I enjoy working with my team and they enjoy working with me. And, you know, that's written on, and, and even, you know, people that are outside of my discipline, like when I was talking about doing all this PR stuff and, 
being flown here and flown there to talk about the game. Like that happened because people were like, hey, you know, Brian, he's cool. He's someone that we can put in a media situation and we don't have to worry about him saying something, you know, uh, disrespectful or him just not being, you know, a pleasant person to be, you know, to hold court. You know, like all that, all that kind of stuff is coming together. So I don't know. I don't know if I answered your question, but. That's no, kinda... I, th- I think you did good with that one. Uh, I guess the rest of these we could kind of fly through, Brian. Uh, AEW, someone wants to know, do you think they need a better music group? Because they're, they, someone feels, Elijah Washington feels it's too generic. Uh, two, it's not getting over with their fans. And three, they need the sound effect to fit the wrestler's character. And four, do you know any good music composers? Uh, Howl at my man, at TZ Scott on Twitter. He's a good music composer. He actually did Sammy Guevara's theme song. So, uh. You can talk to him, and I interviewed him on my podcast. Actually, really cool dude. Um, I hear this. I I heard this when AEW first got on uh, TNT, and I kind of was in agreement with it. Like there were some 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 songs that I liked a lot more that I didn't. But here we are, you know, December twenty sixth, and honestly, I, I think maybe it's just like repetition or whatever. But I really, I I kind of like most everybody's theme music uh, for most guys. I. I love Darby Allen. I love, I love Cody Rhodes, and I, I used to, I used to hate his fucking song. Dude, Cody, uh, Cody's is my workout music, bro. What are you talking about? That's my lad. That's the I, pinky rap. Like I'm like, ah, they took my name. They took that man's name. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, yeah, it, I, it, I, like I said, like when he when he left WWE in 2015, and he started using that. I was like, I don't know if I like this thing. But over the years, like I, it's really grown on me. Like now, when I hear that, I get goosebumps because I'm like, "Oh, my boy Cody's coming out." Um, <laughs> and all the I, fire, I most, all the pyro all, he gets too, right? We laugh every Wednesday yeah. when he comes out. I'm like, "Damn, bro!" <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. I think the only I'm not a fan of Brandon Cutler's music. <laughs> I'm not um, a fan of Brandon Cutler. <laughs> I mean, <'cause... laughs> But uh, but most of the guys that are on team that are on that are, you know, are regularly shown on TNT, I like. I like the best friends uh, music. Uh, that I love on Pentagon and Phoenix. Um, Jimmy Havoc. I think Jimmy Havoc is a perfect example of someone's music that fits kind of like his character and gimmick. It's very kind of uh, God. brooding, goth. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I think I, I like more than I dislike. A, a, lo- a lot of them came with their indie theme songs. So like MJF is still using his indie theme that he always used. Like they probably paid yeah. for this and they're like, "Yo, I own this, so let me use it." Cool. And I, I love him. And I love it. I like MJF's me music. Too. I think that probably fits, you know, his character. Greatest heel, man. I swore, man, that dude had me ready to fight him. And I'm like, dude, yeah, remember this is wrestling, bro. Wake up. <laughs> I'm like, don't let this dude get <laughs> under your skin. <laughs> had me laughing at him. Um, Sick wants to know what was the best wrestling, uh, I think best wrestling video game you're most proud of. Um, two, um, I have two WWE 2k 14. Hell yeah. Um, because (laughs) I actually, okay. I actually got three WWE 2k 14. Mostly because of you know the the work that the chance that I got to uh, to work on the streak, um, which was something that you know I got to work. I like that was all me, me and working with Ukes, uh, their artists, their programmers, their designers on that side, and that was some of the most fun that I had. Um, in addition to all the other regular duties that I do on the game, um, so 2K14 holds a special place. WWE uh, 2K11. Um, just because I had the most fun developing that title. I don't know what it was. It was, I don't know, like the team that I was working with at the time were just like every, everybody got along. I got to work with two of my, my closest friends, um, one being Justin, the other being my, my good friend, Dan Ryan, who uh, used to do promotion. He's, he was the original designer of Universe Mode. Dan was the man. Uh, that was my boy. Yeah, you yeah, you Dan. Yeah, um, so that was really fun. And then um, I recently put out a tweet a couple of days ago. Um, I never really talked about it, but I, and I know the fans don't like this game, but for me personally, it was just something that I felt proud of in spite of like all the hardships that I was going through personally. Uh, and that was uh, 2K15. Um, that was the game that I did when we had, we all we and the rest of my coworkers you know moved or got relocated to be a part of 2K. 
And uh, that was the game that I did working with them. Um, but it was a hard year. I lost my mom and I had to take some time away from the product or from the project to, uh, you know, deal and take care of some things. But uh, I ended up coming back um, to the game and I finished it. And like I said, I know the, the reaction to it. People were disappointed with, you know, the, the lack of features and, and that kind of stuff. But but just for me personally, I felt proud. I know my mom would have wanted me to to continue because she was always proud of what I did and, you know, what I made in my career. So I kind of finished, I came back and I finished it up in honor of her. And of course, you know, the fans, I mean, I, I respect everybody who's been supporting, you know, the WWE, you know, the franchise for all the years. And, you know, so I kind of, I had, a, I had a job to do and, you know, I went back and I finished and that game, it, it means a lot, you know, personally and professionally that I was able to get back and finish it up. And yeah, so those three. All right. Um, Elijah Washington asked me one. He said, what was your favorite AEW matches and what do you think they're going to do in 2020? Um, you know what, Elijah, come on in on Wednesday and I'll be able to answer that for you. First big show, I'm going to talk about matches I like, but I'll tell you my favorite AEW match as the, uh, since you asked that one. It's Cody Rhodes versus Dustin. That's still my favorite match, bro. Uh, I was in my living room watching it going crazy jumping up and down. I was like, this is what wrestling's been needing. This is that Mid-South wrestling. Uh, Robert will tell you, and Donnie was there too, I think. Uh, when Dustin was bleeding, I'm like, oh yeah, hit him with a cowboy boot. Um, <laughs> you know, I was like, these are Dusty's kids. I go into Dusty mode. I start talking like, I got some crazy kids. I tell you, if you will, man, can dream, baby. Yeah, cut that blood. Take that baby aspirin, Dustin. Take that baby <laughs> aspirin. Um, but they, they, they go in, man. Uh, I thought that was a great match, told a great story. And then the part where the Young Bucks made fun of it, I laughed at it after the fact. But I was emotional when that happened, when he was like, I don't need a partner. I don't need a friend. I need my older brother. And they hug, and I was just like, oh, oh Miss Elizabeth Macho Man feels all over the place. So uh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, boom, boom, boom. I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with you. People are talking Smash Bro Wars. Uh, Sick asked the question. I think this is going to be tough to answer quickly. How do you punish players who spam or cheese taking the fun out of wrestling games? I don't think that's an easy answer yeah uh I'll, I'll just say that and whatever i know that that's a problem but i'll just say that in whatever new project that you know we do uh we'll do better and when i say we'll do better like we as a developer will do better to uh to mitigate that shit because i know it's it can be an annoying <laughs> thing it can it can answer. yeah that, that that falls on us the people that are making it you know so we'll we'll do our best um let's see here what did somebody else i think we're on our last question uh frank Mir and brock lesnar how do we feel about it uh i already saw what they did once i think you're overdoing it a little bit at this point with the mma fighters coming i mean a one-off cool but i don't want to see frank Mir get a contract and be in there every week i thought he signed with them he's with wwe I mean that's what I that's what I heard like at the time that he had signed some deal, but I mean I, I don't I don't watch the Saudi shows, but I heard that that match wasn't very good. Oh no like, no, Frank like Frank Mir just started talking. I think he did an interview with Chris Van Vliet to late, today that came out, and I think he was bringing it. Oh up. no oh oh I'm thinking about the uh, Kane Velasquez. Yes. Oh, my bad my bad. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so Frank Mir must have brought it up that he wants to wrestle Brock, too. I'm cool with a one-off. I mean, spread it out a little bit because we just had Kane Velasquez and him fight, and that was eh, that was kind of buns, in my opinion. Are you, yeah, are you, I, uh, yeah. Are you same? Huh? I, I said, how do you feel about it? Same. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'd rather see Frank Mir and Brock if they have to in, in a wrestling ring than uh, Kane Velasquez. I mean, like I said, I didn't see the, the Velasquez match, but uh, yeah, I heard it wasn't anything too spectacular, and I don't know. Like, I'm kind of, I'm just done with the whole Brock thing. Period. And I, and I like Brock, and it, honestly, it doesn't do with him. It's just how they're using him. You know, it's like I just wish he was more integrated into, you know, working and dealing with the actual wrestlers that are on that roster instead of trying to bring in outside people for him to uh, compete against. But, I mean, that's something that we've been dealing with now ever since Brock, I mean, shit, with the past six years now. Right. You know? Um, so. Sick. I, no one else has any more. Oh, I'm sorry. Connor did ask, what's your top indie promotion right now? Oh, man, right now. Uh 
damn. I'm really digging what Beyond Wrestling is doing. Mm -hmm. I, I watch a lot of their stuff uh, on YouTube. Um, here in LA, um, I mean, obviously PWG is always the top one. I don't go to their, ever since they left Reseda, it's been, you know, more difficult to go to their shows. I mean, it was difficult to go to Reseda, you know, the last couple of years they were there just because they always sell out. Um, but PWG is always a destination in LA. But the new, the new spot in LA is Joey Ryan's uh, uh, bar. Bar wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to try to go to, the, I've been to a couple of their shows. Um, and they've got some events coming up for New Year's that I'm hopefully going to be able to go to. So, yeah, bar being local in L.A. and then beyond that, beyond wrestling, I dig what they're doing. Yeah, um, and I some of the oh, guys oh, and, and OTT over the top wrestling that promotion in uh, was in Ireland. Mm -hmm. That shit is dope. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen I've seen one or two of their things too, just on like YouTube and stuff, or people on Twitter capture like a piece of a match. I'm like, oh. Oh, this is kind of this is different. This is some uh, other stuff. Uh, you know what? GCW. I, I did a giveaway for that. I really want to check out more of their stuff too. It's kind of like ECW esque a little bit, but I, I'm just trying to watch some different things lately, just to you know get out of the the big bubble of sometimes the major pro wrestling stuff that we get into. And I want to give you some feedback that I saw in here, Brian. A lot of people are saying uh, that they would be fine with a well-developed game every few years. Just give us continuous DLC until the next game's release and updated content. So take it how you want with that. That was just some feedback for you. <laughs> if you jean jacket on too <laughs> under the <laughs> under the ring with, under, on a ladder. Um, no, I, that's I, I I hear you guys. I hear you guys. I want the same thing. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for doing this little extra. I think I'm going to separate this from the video because we went about a half hour just answering questions for people. Uh, I thank you, dude, for doing this once again. Um, if you want to tell the people one more time where they can find you, it's in the description, actually. You guys can click right to his Twitter, subscribe to him right now. But um, if you want to give uh, any last shout-outs or whatever you want to say, man, I'm going to put this as a separate video, though. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, at TrueBWill, T-R-U-B-W-I-L-L. And uh, just want to say thank you, Conrad, for having me on. This has been fun. It's always, it's always, you know, a pleasure for me to get to uh, chat with you about wrestling. So, uh, so thank you, man. And congratulations on, you know, on the success you're having with your show, EP Dub. I love it. And uh, yeah, man, that's uh, 2020 is going to be a big year for both of us. Darn right. We got to get you to get some EPW merch. Get it out there for me, baby. Get it out there for me. Yeah, I know. I need. I, I know. I got to support you, man. I'm going to get some. Uh, I'm, I'm going to buy some. Don't worry. Rob, Rob makes all the shirt designs, so we're, we'll be good on that. Um, guys, join me next time when we do our um, year-end review. As soon as Rob can get over here, I'm, I can't tell you what day it's going to be on, but it'll be before next Wednesday, before the new year. If Rob's not here, I'll get someone else to do it. We'll go over your results. I have... Over a hundred, uh, we're in the triple digits basically. I'll tell you for votes for all the categories. We did 10 categories, and we'll talk about our wrestler of the decades if you guys are in the live chat with us. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Thank you for checking out everything pro wrestling. I'm Conrad Cushman for my guest Brian Williams, the best video game.